Hello, thanks for joining me. My name is Chad Kroll, and this is going to be a tutorial on creating a Kubernetes cluster in Azure, installing Nginx, and displaying your first web page. Just a quick disclaimer, the virtual machines that we create in this demonstration will incur charges, so why don't you check out uh, Azure pricing to make sure that you don't have any unexpected bills at the end of this demonstration. So let's jump right in. Going to start by adding a user to our local workstation. And let's just say the user is Bob. Now let's change the password for the user that we just created, which we named Bob. Passwd Bob. And I'll give it a secure password and retype my password. And now let's sudo over to Bob. And let's go ahead and generate some SSH keys. A pair of SSH keys will be generated. One will be private and one will be public. The public key is what we're going to share with our Azure VM in order to authenticate and connect to it and SSH into it. We'll type in SSH-keygen. That will generate our public and private key. And we'll be asked if uh, we want to store it in a different location other than default. The default is going to be your home directory in the .ssh folder and the ID underscore RSA. And we're going to leave the empty passphrase. And there we go. We created an RSA2048 key. Change directory into the .ssh. We'll see that we have ID RSA and ID RSA pub. And if we cat the ID RSA .pub, this is what we're going to be sharing with our Azure virtual machines. Let's now go ahead and create our first virtual machine. Uh, I've already logged into the Azure portal, which you can go to uh, by typing in portal.azure.com into your web browser, and you're presented with this dashboard. From here, we'll go to Virtual Machines on the left-hand side, and click on Add to add a new VM. And we're going to select Ubuntu Server, and we're going to select 16.04 LTS. And we're going to name it k8s-master, and we're going to change the this type to HTD for cost reasons. The username is going to be Bob, and we're going to go ahead and copy our public SSH key from our terminal and paste it in. We're just going to use an existing resource group, and East US is fine, and click OK. So here we are at step two. I'm just going to select the cheapest option, which is the B1S. Um, select, availability zone, and I can click on OK here for step three, and I'm going to click on create. And I'm going to wait for that to initialize and create, and I will be back when it's done. And looks like our virtual machine has been created. I'm just going to go ahead and create two more machines to add two nodes to our cluster. And I'll speed this process up. It's uh, basically the same process that we just went through with the uh, K8S master. All right, now we have all three of our virtual machines set up. So let's go ahead and connect to our K8S master server. I'll just click on the name of the VM and then go ahead and copy the public IP address. And now we'll just type in SSH and then our IP address. And 
There we go. We are logged into our server. So we can quickly just run an app update, an app upgrade. And now we can begin to install Docker. This way we can have our Docker group created, the users and the services to run when the machine starts up. Now let's go ahead and create a file that will ensure that the same uh, C group drivers are used by Docker and Kubernetes. Let's just open up daemon.json and vim and let's start typing in exec dash ops colon and then in square brackets we'll type in native.cgroupdriver equals systemd close our quotes and we'll close uh, squiggly brackets and we'll save our file and now it's finally time to start to install Kubernetes. So first thing we'll do is add a key for our repo. So we'll curl dash s this address right here. And we'll pipe it to our apt key add. Oops, looks like we ran into an authentication failure. I'm sick of typing sudo anyway, so we'll just sudo over to root. And try that again. Next, we will add our Kubernetes sources. So we'll create a file named kubernetes.list in the etsy apt sources.list.d directory. Within that file, we will enter in the following deb, http, and you can see it on your screen. And then we'll Go ahead and run apt update one more time so you can grab the new sources. And finally, we'll install the cube commands, which are kubelet, kubeadm, and kubectl. Next, we'll initialize the CNI, which we're going to use flannel. Flannel is pre-configured to use the CIDR network 10.244.0.0/16, so we'll do that. And now we'll make sure to copy the kubeadmin join command, and then we'll exit out of sudo, and then as the regular user Bob will start the commands listed at the top of the screen, which start with make directory. Now we're going to download and run the YAML for deploying flannel. So type in kubectl apply. Now we're going to run the command kubectl get pods uh, dash dash all dash namespaces to wait for all of the services to be up and running. So we're looking at the status column. And it looks like all of our services are up and running. So now we can add our additional nodes. Let's log into our first node and start to install our prerequisites. Our first prerequisite is Docker. So we'll run apt install docker.io. Now we will add our GPG key. Now we will add our Kubernetes sources. Now we'll run app update to grab our sources that we just added. And we'll install kubelet, kube admin, and kube control. And then we'll run the join command, which we got from our kube master after we ran the uh, kube admin init command prior in this lesson. Looks like that ran successfully. So now we can go over to our master and type in kubectl git nodes, and we'll see two nodes now. And we'll do the same thing for node two. And then we'll go back over to master again, do kubectl get nodes, and we'll see the third node show up. 
So now we're going to deploy our Nginx deployment. Here's a look at what the deployment looks like. It's the YAML. And we're going to type in kubectl create-f nginx deployment.yaml. Looks like our deployment was successful. And in order to check on the deployment, let's type in kubectl get deployments. So now let's use the service deployments to expose a port on our deployment so we can access this from a web page. Now let's see what port it is exposed on and the cluster IP associated with it. Looks like it's 10.104.121.94. Just to show our web page, we'll curl localhost 30926, which is the port it's exposed on. And there it is, the HTML that says, welcome to Nginx. Well, that's our demonstration for today. Thanks so much for joining me. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about Kubernetes, please check out the Certified Kubernetes Administrator course over on linuxacademy.com. But for now, I hope this was helpful, and we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.